Hello, everyone, and welcome to MBA 566 Digital Marketing. Uh, in this short video, I'm going to talk a little bit about why uh, we should be studying digital marketing. I mean, quite frankly, the answer should be obvious to anyone who's paying attention to the business world. There's social media all around us now. Uh, there's online ads. There's virtual ads. There's augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, there are um, ways to track all this data, right? There's uh, a paid click search. There's search engine optimization techniques. There's all these ways that marketing has become digital. In fact, I bet like 10 years from now, there won't be a class called digital marketing because it'll just be called marketing, right? Like that's the whole point of it, right? Is that it's all moving online. It's ever present. It's all around us. And uh, that's the real reason why to study it. But let me go through a few kind of specific examples and reasons, right? So, um, you know, it's an extremely exciting field. I actually created this slide almost 10 years ago, right? And I find it still rings very true today. Digital marketing is an intersection. It's an intersection of so many different studies, so many different ways of viewing the world, right? So it's an intersection of social science and technology, right? Social science studies how people interact, how they work with each other. Technology is about the the new methods we have for people to communicate, the new methods by which we allow them to interact, right? And so digital marketing studies that. It tries to understand why people are trading information over Twitter the way they are, why they like certain images on Instagram over others. And that's really what that intersection is about. It's where psychology meets information processing, right? Psychology, the fundamental understanding of how people take in information, process it, and make a decision meets the more technical field of information processing, how we take little pit, pit, bits of information and put them together uh, to come up with something along the ways, right? Um, and so it's both you know, psychological efforts, right? Like pure emotional status um, of, an, of a product might sway us to make a decision or the fact that we find a new piece of information, a new piece of knowledge about a product that allows us to dive in and really kind of decide that's the per product we want to purchase. It's design meets engineering, right? For instance, if you're marketing an app, right? The absolute best app in the world. This is so cool. It's got the coolest piece of technology in it, the coolest pieces of engineering. But if it looks like junk, no one's going to, no one's going to install it. No one's going to use it, right? So you need the design aspect. You need some aspect that makes it look good, that people want to interact with it. They want the user experience that's really phenomenal, not just the technology that actually works, right? On the other hand, you have the best looking app in the world, world and if every time you run it it crashes right that's also not going to work very well then no one's going to use that app either right so you need this combination of design and engineering to really make digital marketing powerful it's where sociology meets innovation so sociology is the study of social forces about how we interact as a society as a group around us um, and innovation right is the study of how new products come about and how they decide to be adopted by a group of individuals right sociological forces we know can constrain or enhance the way we view particular products or ideas whereas innovation is really about trying to embrace those forces, embrace the sociological forces to make sure that the new products that are coming out are really received well by a large group of individuals. And of course, it's all driven by constant change and permanent evolution, right? There's an old saying from the Roman philosopher's time that you can never step in the same river twice. And that's never more important than it is in the digital marketing world. I've been teaching this class now for over 10 years. And the truth of the matter is, is that the class that I teach right now looks nothing like the class I started teaching 10 years ago. And this class that you're going to see today looks nothing like the class that I taught a year ago, right? And so it's always changing. It, it makes it a... Uh, um, a fun field to be working on and studying, it makes it a hard field to teach, right? Because I'm constantly having to update these materials as you'll see throughout the semester. So let's just start with a small area, an area that I like to research a lot, which is the social media space. Of course, we're gonna get into a lot more um, uh, channels and a lot more technologies throughout this, but this is um, a graph that was put together by a company uh, called Luma Partners. So this is from the 2020 edition. Um, they try and lay out where all the social media 
players are in the world. And of course, many of you have heard of companies like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and WeChat and you know several of these other ones up here, BuzzFeed, Flipboard, right? Um, Bitly, uh, for instance, right? Waze, you, you've worked with Gowalla for some of you, right? Like these are all companies and apps that you've interacted with. But when you lay them all out and you look at how many organizations that are out there playing in the space of just social, right? Which is just one part of the digital marketing landscape is truly phenomenal. And of course, the way this is organized is on the, on the far right of your screen, you have the apps that more interact directly with the people. On the far left, you have the apps that interact more with the marketers themselves, right? Um, and you know what's fascinating about this whole landscape, which is overwhelming already, right, to me, is that it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, almost every, these are the apps that are generic to any platform, to any vertical, right, out there, to any product that you might be selling, right? But in reality, every single vertical now has their own set of social media apps, right? And so, for instance, I'm a, um, a fan of uh, good craft beer. Uh, if you're here in the Raleigh area, of course, there's lots of good options around here. Um, you know, and, uh, um, and there's a number of different apps out there. They're specifically about craft beer. So Beer Advocate, Untap, probably by far the most popular. Rate Beer, been around forever. Pintly, right? These are all different apps that exist out there. They're specifically focused in the... Um, uh, in the space of, 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 of craft beer, right? And their social media apps. So here's the interesting thing, right? If I'm a company out there and I want to start a social media listening campaign, which I, I argue many times that you should all do. In fact, I did a one minute video about why we should all do it a, a little while ago for the uh, Pool College webpage. But um, if you want to be in touch with your consumers, if you want to be paying attention to what they're saying on social media, and who wouldn't? Because Quite frankly, it's one of the best ways to find out what your consumers are saying about you. Um, you need to not only pay attention to your standard big platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Pinterest, Quora, right? All these kinds of platforms. But you also need to pay paying attention. Probably you need to pay more attention to the ones that are specifically related to your vertical, right? In this case, you know, the, the various craft beer apps that are out there, right? Now, um, that makes it complex. It makes it evolving. It makes it interesting, right? Um, and of course, um, you know, you might want to think, well, what are these are the most popular? And so I often, there are two sources that I use a lot for this kind of data. I like eMarketer. It's a good kind of resource for this kind of data. But another one is Pew, right? And Pew does this internet life kind of survey on a regular basis. This one, I think, is from uh, earlier uh, in 2020, one and early in 2021, right? And I was asking which uh, social media platform is the most popular. And um, they, you know, if you look at it, the share of adult users of social media was 11% in 2006. That was 15 years ago, right? So one out of 10 um, Americans, um, adult Americans had a social media presence 15 years ago. Now it's 72%, right? Um, and you know it's 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 up there, right? It's it's really getting quite large across all the categories, and this kind of lays out the different platforms and which ones are dominant. Facebook by far most dominant, though you can argue YouTube and YouTube actually in 2018 19 is above it. Though how much of that is actually used as a social media platform versus just a consumption platform, right? Um, I think Facebook has the the unique uh, space that is both, most users are both creators and consumers of Facebook content. Not all of them, but many of them are. Whereas most YouTube users are just plain consumers, right? And then you got almost any number of other platforms, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, WhatsApp, um, down there in kind of the 10 to 20, 25%, 30% range. And this quote from Deborah Aho Williamson at William Marketer, goes back, you know, I think I got this quote about five or six years ago, but I think it's still very relevant. The ongoing headache for marketers is that social networking is such a powerful consumer activity, but incredible charging, challenging as a marketing medium, right? Like, how do we actually take advantage of social media when what we put out there can be turned and used against us or can be modified or can be added to or can be edited 
right? And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the ways in which social media um, is more of a platform that you guide rather than you direct. Uh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We'll talk about that in later classes. Um, one of those things that helps uh, to think about, right, is what should you be using social media for? Uh, and this is a survey I did uh, with Emzinga and Teradata Aster, uh, ter now just called Teradata, by the way, um, almost uh, nine years ago. And, you know, this, um, this still rings true for me, right? The companies are primarily using social for branding and marketing, customer experience, collaboration, and very little for sales, right? But branding and marketing by far are the primary use. And what do companies want back from that uh, social media invest uh, investiture? They want customer feedback, right? They wanna know what their customers are saying about them. They wanna understand trends in the data and they wanna see ROI on their investment, right? They wanna see that when they put social media ads or content out there, that they're seeing uh, people come in the door. They're, they're seeing sales happen on the back end, right? Um, and, you know, that I think this is pretty much true, even though the survey is quite old right now at this point, I think that the, the rating here is still the ranking of different activities that companies are involved in, what they want out of it, still are there quite a bit. Now, the problem is most companies don't have people who can do any of this. Right. And so that's why you're in this class here. You're learning how to do all this and how to really get involved in what's going on with social media and digital marketing in general. Right. Um, you know, one, another perspective you can take, uh, I like this, this is a write-up that came out by the Nielsen Norman Group uh, last January, um, and I really like the fact that they kind of break down what users are trying to do when they interact with businesses on social media, and that's a great way to think of not, you know, you can erase social media from the slide and just say digital marketing, and I think it's very true, right? It's useful to think about what a user is trying to do with your digital marketing presence, impression presence, right? Can they find something interesting? Can they find what they want? Um, can they research something? Can they discover something? What is it? What is the product that you have out there? How does it work for me? How could I use that, right? Um, do they want to just play around with the content you put up there, right? Um, do they want to just be amused for a little while, right, by some branded content that's out there? They might want to try and find out how to purchase the product, right? Um, they might be looking for solutions to a problem that they have, right? And if they're really, you know, if they're fans, which we hope they have, they all become, you know, Seth Godin likes to call this flipping the funnel, right? They want to share that experience out there with the rest of the audience. They really want to kind of talk to people on social media about all the great stuff your company and organization is doing for them. And so, um, you know, thinking through these use cases and how you might classify what every uh, consumer is coming to your website is trying to do and how your website or your social media presence can help them achieve those goals is vitally important. So what are the goals for this course, right? Well, the goals for this course are by the end of this course, you should be able to explain the importance of digital marketing, somewhat we just talked about, but hopefully we'll have some more and greater examples as we go through the course. You'll be able to define and compare up-to-date terms, methods, and technology in the digital space, right? So you, you'll know what SEO means, you know what PPC means, you'll know what um, a, a, a UX, UX design is all about, right? Um, You'll be able to create a profitable digital marketing strategy. In fact, the big chunk of this course is actually you creating a profitable digital marketing strategy for an organization uh, that, we, that, that you work with right, over the course of the semester. You'll develop leadership, teamwork, and communication skills for digital marketing, and we'll hope they will help you create, nurture creativity and critical thinking skills in this domain, right? Uh, but you know, really, this course, is about introducing you to all of the concepts that are involved in digital marketing. Um, you know, if, if, if things were, if we had infinite amounts of time, we'd be going into all sorts of detail about all of them. But really, I want to give you enough to know about all the different channels of digital marketing and how they can be used and, and explored and, and uh, taken advantage of for the organization that you're working for. So with that, I'm going to end. Um, and uh, thank you all for being here. And I hope this has given you a little taste and a little bit of excitement about what digital marketing means and why it's important.